is. Now then, may the Lord be with us. And hopefully we get this thing popping up on the screen anytime soon. And somebody tells us we're live. I'm trying not to put my glasses on, but I don't want to look stoned in the video. Here's a look. Let's just see what we got here. Ladies and gentlemen in the chat, if you can see us, let us know because we have no friggin' idea whether or not we are in fact live. What does it take? And, uh, oh, I think we might be on, Justin, because we got an advert coming through, so let's have a look. Oh, yeah, I can see you. Uh, just checking this out right now, mate. I'm going to give you an honest assessment. You look, uh, you look all right, mate. You look like you've been out in the sun. Bit of a Sam. Obviously, you've got the pencil there um, matching the shirt, Justin, which I always think is a nice look. I look uh, right. relatively slim with the back background and, you know, taking time to put on the black shirt and that. Uh, struggle to hide the side tits. I'll just... Yeah, there they are. There you go. You have them, yeah. aren't you? Justin Bishop, ladies and gentlemen, is in the house. Welcome to the Deep Inside series with the Bama Bull. Now, Mrs. Bishop... Does not like me too much because I keep her husband off work. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, you were going to go train, weren't you, pal? Uh, yeah, yeah. I was. I'm in the gym parking lot, actually. <laughs> so it's the thought that counts, guys. You know what I mean? He was right there. He was going to do it. He was getting ready, and uh, put him off. But your next shag, you were just telling me I've, I've actually done you a favour, you see? Right. Yeah, I wasn't planning on doing a whole lot of work today, but I ended up having to do a hell of a lot of work today. So we set a bunch of heavy ass doors and a whole lot of this, you mm. know. So got a good shoulder workout in nonetheless. So what time are we at over there right now, mate? What time is it for you guys? Uh three thirty-two. Three thirty-two. It's like nine thirty in the evening over here. The day is done. Uh, it's dark and nowhere near. As hot as it is over there. No, we're looking at about 84, which is not that bad, but the humidity is shitty. <laughs> Got a lot of insects and stuff there as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah it's like the Amazon. If you come over here about August, it's just like the Amazon. <laughs> oh, dude. Fucking... I know you deal with yeah, that. The tre trees are sweating. Yeah, I couldn't deal with that, son. Could not deal with that. But... Justin, great to have you on the show again. It's been a long while, mate. What's it been since we last chatted? Like two, three months? Yeah, it's been a couple months. Yeah. yeah. You've been busy. You've been you've been doing a bit. It looks like uh, your brother has. Josh looks yeah. like I've been to you before. He's a big lad now, isn't he? Yeah, he looked like he ate the old Josh, right? <laughs> I can't say shit, can I really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that will be the pot calling the kettle black, but he does look big. He looks solid. Yeah, he's strong as shit right now, too. Um he actually, he popped in yesterday. I, th I think he was getting something out of my truck while I was in the gym and I was doing some bench. He just, I had 315 on there. He laid on, laid under it and racked it four or five times. All right. You got to go. Yeah. Making me look bad. And what about your dad? Is he still doing a lot with you? Uh, I mean, he still comes there every practice. I don't know how much he's training because usually when he trains, he goes in the morning. So I'm not a morning guy. You know, I get up and go straight to work. It always amazes me with lads like yourself, mate, that are um, you got a heavy job anyway, and in brutal environment. You know, I always I always remember I went over to when I was in Vegas for one of the I was commentating on one of the fights over in Vegas. I remember walking down the strip, right? And this is back when I was not a fat knacker. This was back when I was like in good shape. And I'm walking down the strip in Vegas, and it's typical Vegas weather. It's like I don't know, I think it was like September sometime around then, but it's it's warm as hell walking down the strip in Vegas and there's this dude and he's led under a car. And my dad's a car mechanic by trade, you know, all well, my life's been around mechanic and you know, motor vehicles. So uh, I've spent a bit of time in a, in a boiler suit led under motor cars, not doing, knowing what I'm doing at all, but just having instruction with my dad and um, watching. Oh, the flashlight kind of shit. Yeah. That kind of shit. You know, he wouldn't let yeah. me near doing anything that, uh, that allowed me to, really yeah, get any skills didn't want me uh, to be a mechanic but i always remember this guy i'm looking and i'm thinking jesus christ you poor bastard and as i'm walking past i'm looking over and he sort of acknowledges me and he's like all right mate and I, i'm talking to him for a few minutes and he seemed perfectly okay 
with the fact that it's like, I don't know, 90 degree heat. Yeah. And he's there in his boiler suit working away. And I remember thinking, I'm walking up the strip. I'm doing nothing, just walking. And I felt drained and knackered. And then lads like yourself, you're doing all that work, hard manual labor throughout the day. Then you go into the gym and training. You know, it, it, yes. I, it's I not my favorite. Thing, your advantage. I, I, shit, I would hope so. Uh, I don't think, I think it has its pros and its cons. Um, I mean, I think you would adjust to anything you live there long enough. Like a few times I've went up north in, you know, when it's actually really cold. Mm -hmm. No, sir. I don't, I don't own clothes to keep me warm enough, you know, but here, <clears throat> I mean, I, I'm not going to tell you it's not a shitty job during the middle, you know, dead middle of the summer yeah. on the lake, but, um, you know, it keeps you, keeps you lean, you know, your, your beach ready. You know? Yeah, hey, <laughs> I need to get my ass over there. If you can get me beat um, ready soon, I'll come and fit some frigging timbers. Yeah, I mean, and I'm, you know, I've only, when you get to about Texas, about the middle of Texas, it turns into a little more dry heat or a lot more of a dry heat. Mm -hmm. Like the first time I went to Vegas, you know, I, I barely sweated it at all. You could tell it was hot, but I wasn't sweating. It was like 110, 112, something like that. Um, I remember putting the sauna suit on though and going outside and you know I started losing weight that way mm -hmm. but it was completely different from here you know you're you know it's hot here as soon as you walk outside it can be the middle of the night and you're gonna start sweating it's it's not fun but you know I, I work around it you know when I go in the gym I let me see I got this shit here I've been taking lately I've been trying not to take this shit but Give me a little extra boost before I go in there. A little bit of a kick, yeah. So yeah. how have you gone on during COVID for motivation and so on, mate? Because obviously you're one of the guys that uh, you've not been overly active, but we saw you come out. I think the last time I saw you come out for the big match was um, probably the TAL show yeah. where you pulled both arms. Have you been uh, training very hard behind the scenes? or Would you say that you're... Because obviously you've got a very big match coming up week after next weekend. For for those people who don't know, just tell us a bit about that. What you got going down uh, weekend after next, brother? I'm gonna go to Hawthorne, Nevada, for um, the I think it's Kenny Boschnik. Uh, if I said that right, you know, I'm gonna pull Paul Talbot left-handed, mm -hmm. best of five. Um, the weight cap is 190, and which I didn't even look at the flyer. The uh, weight classes are 185 and 205. So we could have just did 185, but um, we, agreed, we, we agreed to 190. So, yeah, um, yeah I feel pretty good about it. Um, going back to the TAL event, I kind of took off the winter working on my house. Mm -hmm. I added a bathroom on and um, still working on that, unfortunately. But um, most of it's done. And uh, I got back about a couple weeks before um, before Alabama State, which is in February. I took off about five, six weeks from doing anything. And uh, I was like, I don't want to go in there not training at all. So I went and trained for two and a half weeks and thought I did something. But I did. I only pulled left-handed. I won the 98 class, and then I won the overalls. I beat um, um, Paul uh, Passmore left-handed. Which is a yeah. hell of a strong individual right there. Yeah, I've never beat him left-handed. We've had some wars, but um, and I'm not going to say he wasn't tired, but, I mean, he entered the same tournament I did. So, but, um, yeah, I, I felt good that day. Um, I've been – I lined this match up uh, probably two or three weeks after that, which I had been talking with uh, Billy about pulling Perez, like I was telling you, and uh, Craig. I yeah, so take a step guys. back before you get on to Paul. Just tell everybody about that, mate, because you were telling me like a little bit of the history of this before we went live. Mm -hmm. And the way I understood it there, you, you had an opportunity or you you would have liked to arm wrestle Fred yeah. or Tuye, either yeah. one of those guys. Well, uh, Craig didn't want to pull for whatever reason at uh, Nevada. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, sure we'll, I'm sure we'll line something on down the year. Um, and Varez, just what Billy told me, um, Varez didn't want to pull me in the, uh, he'd pull me in the tournament, not in the, um, 
in a super match because he felt like he could win more money there. Mm-hmm. And then a couple of weeks later, you know, after we lined the match up with Paul, um, he says, uh, you know, I heard, heard that he's out of country. And then I hear, like I said, uh, a couple of days ago that Hoffman told me he's in country, but he thinks he's injured. And mm-hmm. I don't, I don't think anybody knows what the hell is going on for, with uh, Perez. So, but maybe he shows up. Normally he does. He shows up every year to that tournament. Well, it's one of those things, isn't it, that Perez has been gathering momentum in terms of every, it sounds like everybody I speak to will always say, oh, like, I don't know him, you know, and they'll be like, oh, you're yeah. the most guy, and I'm like, I'm, it's like, you know, there's yeah. a thing on the wheel, have you heard of this? I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> I, do, I do know of the motherfucker, yeah. And yeah. he's been racking up so many wins over there, surprising a lot of people, they didn't know anything about him. Over here in Europe, he made his name as a lefty. That was yeah. his thing, you know, that was where he was really, really hard to beat. But I was, I'm not going to say shocked because you told me a little bit about it, but I was very, very, uh, I was I was actually surprised that that guy did not say yes because I know you're dangerous, but you were saying that he was one guy that gave you a little bit of nerves. You know, you oh, were yeah. concerned about that, so. Oh, yeah. Well, there's no doubt. I mean, I pulled him, um, what was it, 2018? I think I went over there and pulled Kenny left-handed mm-hmm. um and i beat kenny and um so i'm a little bigger than when i pulled kenny um anyway i pulled him he smashed the shit out of me along with ron bath and uh robbie Topi, a couple other people um so you know, i was like yeah this guy's for real you know if i want to if i want to show somebody i'm for real beat this guy you know yeah so um I've never felt a guy with that much arm power that was that small. You know? Yeah, he, he really isn't a big lad, is he? No. But but stay in power. Holy shit. Just center of the table power. Just like you're not going this fucking way, but so far, and mm-hmm. that's it. You know, I mean, you got Ron Bath flat handed on your bicep over here, and you're fucking holding him and power through it and go on to beat Robbie Topi, you know, and mm-hmm. whoever else was in that class. I think he won like six classes that day. I was a little embarrassed to get my ass kicked by him. You want to know the truth? You, have you played around with him after the, the event? Did you get a chance no. to sort of have a second go around or no? They don't like to arm wrestle afterwards, man. Um, you know, and I'm not saying it's a European thing because they do. Um, but like, I've tried to arm wrestle Giannis, which that's a little bit different. We're kind of, mm-hmm. I won't say rivals, but, you know, I get that. But I've arm wrestled a few Europeans on the side, and the ones that do pull me, they pull completely different than, say, you or I, you or I would. We're going to ease in there, right? They like to bang. Yeah, it's bang, very, very, you know? very explosive stance. Yeah, that's I kind of, I pulled uh, uh, Giannis's buddy, what's his name, Vlad? I pulled him on the uh, side table. Yeah. Same way. It kind of pissed me off, if you want to know the truth. Vlad the Destroyer, you mean? Was it Vlad? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, anyway, he just smacks me right down. Boom. I'm like, shit, okay. Um, All right, can we slow down a little bit? Smack again, all right. So he's getting a grip, and I just take off, you know, Mm -hmm. smack. And that's all we're doing. We're just going, whoever went first won. There's no – I mean, it really pisses you off when you say – you know, look, can, can you slow down? Can we take a little longer? And somebody just yeah. gets over in half a second. At least at least that, that's what my missus tells me. All right. But, <laughs> you know. But it, I, I think there's a there's a there's a to, to give to cut Vlad some slack here. I don't think that he feels as comfortable ever because he's not a gifted guy in terms of levers, let's be honest. Yeah. Vlad is the same, he's got like quite a short arm. And yet he's a very explosive top roller. So with a guy like yourself, who's known for having hand and wrist strength, I bet he was intimidated, mate. I bet he felt I mean, that grip been. that he thought, look, unless I get... It's almost the difference between the hitting fast to the pad and hitting fast for control. You know what I'm saying? So he'll go, Pum, let's get the dominant position or get a high-handed position, get what he wants, and then he'll slow down. But in your yeah. mind, it's like, for sake. Match is already over, you know. You yeah. just ease into things. Well, I mean, like me and Tom pulled uh, right after, 
because mm-hmm. uh, Tom had a match with Giannis, and um, I pulled Mike Solaris that day. Yep. Um, and me and Tom, you know, slow pulled. So crazy, stupid, this way strength on that guy. Fuck. Oh, yeah, he's a horrible uh, It hurt, hurts my arm every time I even think about that match. Yeah, over supinates, doesn't he? Like, yeah. Oh. Yeah. I'm thinking I got you in a good spot and you start going. I'm like, shit. All right. <laughs> nasty, nasty bastard. He's illegal in this country. We we don't let him out. He's a, but, but, but he is a weirdo. He pulls in a very, he's almost like a worse version of Craig Sanders. You pull with Craig, haven't you? Yeah. That's Craig vaguely. Do deep supinates him. Hook. When he, he gets he used to deep, deep, really twisting tight hook. Um, almost the power wasn't the the issue as much as the speed and the horrible nature of the position. That was the problem. Yeah. You know? A lot of the Spanish arm wrestlers used to pull like that, mate. You know, that really over, over supinated. And um, it's a very effective style, you know, but very, mm. very joint heavy. Yeah, that's the thing, man. You know, I, I just, uh, I hate, I hate that inside arm pain, mm. you know. But I'll tell you, this I can deal with. It's this out here golf I can't is, deal with. That golf is uh, not golf, man. Terrible, isn't it? Because I, I, I can't top roll, you know? Yeah. I mean, I and can the deal with it. that is, it's like if you get that little bit of that nerve damage and it feels like somebody can, your arm's just switched off like a light, you know, you'll be in a position yeah. and all your power just, everything just yeah. drops off, doesn't it? you got nothing left. And I mean, between you and I, I've been dealing with that with my right for the last couple of years on and off, you know, I'll get it to where it feels good. Cause I'm doing nothing but high repetition. I'm kind of staying away from the mm-hmm. table a little bit and go to lifting heavy and getting back on the table heavy and it starts flaring up and shit. I don't know, but I've found the best thing to do is to not, um, you got to practice smart, right. And just don't lift heavy shit in the gym you know, in awkward positions. I mean, you don't need to lift super heavy shit to me. You know, like I do a lot of circuits because one of my downfalls is stamina. If anybody ever, you know, paid attention, that's obvious. And uh, it's one of the things I work on the most. Mm -hmm. Still, still pretty shitty. My bad. It's almost like that sprinter versus marathon runner thing, isn't it? If somebody's tuned that high that they got that explosive fast finish strength then often the downside is the other way uh and it's not an easy transition to make if you're naturally geared in that way you know Uh, look at at devon for example yeah all the stamina in the world but the fast hits aren't really there i compare it to mma all the time you know like you got your conor mcgregor and you got your nate diaz Mm -hmm. you know uh I don't care what Connor does. You you could see the second time they fought, he was you know obviously in a much better condition, and it still didn't help. Yeah, you know, yeah, he's just uh, like like you're talking about Devin. They just they got this lactic acid that doesn't seem to get there. It just or they don't have it. Well, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know. I've even went into reading on what I could eat and what exercises I could do to, to make it faster. You know, yeah. To, well, have to, you thought about going to Brisbane and hanging out with Lachlan Adair, letting him like <laughs> breathe on you? Right. I, only I today, I, w- I shit you not, I'll send you a friggin' video clip uh, for all the people in the chat. What have we got? We're, like, we're just going over the 100 mark in the chat. Just let you know as well, we've got some names in there also. We've got Jason Merlo, top rods in the mother flipping house. we got we got in there Jamie Sheldon's in there, Fox 8 Ball's in there, all the usual suspects. Honky Monkey's in there. Oh, we got a lot of peeps. Yeah, guys, thanks for tuning in, checking it out. Like and share, mother fluffers. Let people know we're on here. But guys in the chat, if you want to send over uh, any of your questions, I will try and check these out. If you want to send us anything, let us know. We'll try and get them on here. Um, but I was saying, I got a note over today from Ryan Bowen. Swear to God, he sent me some wind sprint footage, right, of Lachlan Adair. It's amazing. Wind? wind sprints. So, yeah. Oh. Suddenly, Lachlan Adair comes past. Like a <laughs> goddamn roadrunner. You see nothing I'll like that. I'll, I'll send it to you. Yeah, I got to see that. 
Uh, yeah. I actually got a bet with uh, one of my employees that he thinks he can outrun me for some reason. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to win that lunch. <laughs> I might are you, are, you, are you pretty fast on you? you, you have you got a few moves then? Eh? Quite quick. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm kind of like I am on the table, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to run a, you know, 200 meter, whatever, you know, long distance unless, yeah. you know, you got the police behind me and I've done something wrong maybe. But, yeah, from here, you know, from here to that truck over there, I'm good. Yeah, 20 meter downhill sprint, you're fast as fuck. Yeah, gone. <laughs> you know, I can jump really well. Um, really? I actually, okay. yeah, I, I got about a 50 inch vert. Um, I tried 60 with, you know, run, whatever you call running and jumping. I You've couldn't got get a 50 it. inch vertical jump. Yeah. Now, to put that in that, perspective, an arm wrestling table is like 39 inches higher. Yeah, I think, yeah, something some around, right around 40. Jesus yeah. Christ, mate, that's really good. Yeah, I didn't think it was that good until I seen Mike do, uh, I think Mike did like 47 or 48. I'm oh, like, yeah, shit. Right. Michael jumps onto the table, doesn't he? Like, just yeah, just I was like, three. fuck, that's good. Let me, let me see what I can do. And there's a long concrete wall outside the uh, gym here. Mm. And I just picked the spot. I measured it. It was like 50. I'm like, shit, I don't know if I can get that. You know, and I jumped right up there. I was like, fuck, all right. All right. I still got it, you know. You have still got it, mate. That it's not one you want to get wrong, that though, is it? You know, no, you that's it. what I was <laughs> you know, like a car ramp, car repair. I was telling you about my dad's place at car repair ramp. You know, you put the vehicle on and you jack it up. Yeah. No shit, we used to do that. We used to get in there and it'd be like, right, and we'd go higher. Brew time, lunchtime in the garage, and that was one of the things. You know, you do stupid shit. We like used to like yeah. have an amble. This old fucking oily ass of ambles in there and one of the things was you used to get the anvil and pick the anvil up that's covered in oil and shite and slippy and dangerous as hell and pick it up and put it onto the bench now to do that was like one test of strength and then the other thing we used to do these tests of manhood was that the, the next one was vertical jump onto the ramp and then you'd put it up a bit higher put it up a bit higher one dude called martin house who was working on this thing right he's got a pair of soft like trainers on running shoes sports shoes and he tries to jump this and the toe you know how the toes are always a bit long on that? Fucking toe caught the end of the yeah. ramp. And he, he went down, and they've got like a galve steel metal edge on. Yeah. And he, yeah. his shin, when it hit, it, he went from his ankle right up to his knee. It skinned his shin to the frigging bone. Oh, yeah. I've Whoop. done that a couple of times. My, oh. both, of my, both of my shins look like this all the way down. Mate, bad, bad times, that. Nobody needs yeah. that, life, but yeah, seen that happen. Vile. No, it's that that jumps actually in that video I put out yesterday. I made, uh, I just threw it in there. I, I really, I was just going through my phone. I found this, um, this, uh, the voiceover. I, I really liked it. And I was like, I'm gonna put together a little short clip. It took me like five minutes, <laughs> but that's all the workout videos I had in my phone. So, and I, I, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna put that jump in there too, just because I thought it was pretty, you know. Did you, did you ever crazy. do it as a kid? Like, did you ever enter competitions? I jump and. No, no, hell no! I like women way too much for that. Mate, I tell you what, you probably have big, big time potential. I would think. Yeah, I, you know, I I look back on some stuff, and I was like, you know, if I was just a little smarter when I was a kid, you know, I might have could have been a hell of a defensive back or a wide receiver. Oh, she but could. you know. It's, it's we're here now, you know. What age were you when you started arm wrestling? I know we've been through this once, but uh, I'm 21. Yeah, so you came, you, you've been, you, and how old are you now, mate? Uh, I'll be 32 this year. Hmm, holy shit. Hey, yeah, I just hit the 10 year, 10 year mark in March. Do, Daniel Urich just called you out on this. He says, Bring us to the wall. No way it is 50 inches. Laugh okay. out loud. I can well, walk it's funny that because wall. I've made claims on stuff being a certain number of inches yeah. a shitload of time. Sometimes yeah. in warm weather, sometimes after just getting out of a cold I tell you what, ask, uh, ask Michael Todd because he asked me how tall it was when I posted the video like a year ago. And uh, I walked over there with the tape, took a picture. There you go. But Back in it, back yeah. in it up, mate. I've no what doubt. I didn't tell you. I tried, um, I think, 
a little further down the wall was right at like 56. I tried it and failed miserably, but I only tried it once. Yeah. Got nearly, yeah. nearly again, lost a kneecap. Yeah. Yeah. So it is a ma- I'd love to know what, what's like a, a world class vertical jump. I, you know, I was asking my buddy yesterday because he's really into um, watching the draft and, um, um, bat, you know, he plays a lot of basketball and stuff. Yeah. And um, he told me it was pretty good, you know, from uh, what I understand. But we was we got to talking about the run because that's who I was doing the uh, the box jump with when you, you take mm-hmm. a few steps, whatever. And uh, he, he got the 60. I didn't get the 60. And uh, he told me that um, – and I'm trying to remember the football player's name that he got 72 inches. Jesus Christ. It's like a six foot, man. How do you jump that high? <laughs> yeah, that's uh what's the kid? Oh, what was the kid's name? I've seen a lot on uh, somebody in the chat will know this. There's a kid does um like dunks, you know what I mean? He does basketball. Jordan. Dunks. I think his uh, name's Jordan. But he's not. He's not a. He's, he's called Jordan, is he? This is like a. He looks like a hippie kid, like a he's like a kid. stoner or something. Yeah. You know, skinny. I know you talking kid. about. And he does a. Ama- he jumps over. I saw this kid. My one of my sons had him on a YouTube video, and he jumped over a car, and frigging dunked a basketball. Yeah. And I when absolutely. I kid, I, I I'm like, that's trip for no way. That's incredible. I was a kid. We I used to watch uh, Skywalker. He was he held all the records. I'm trying to remember. Uh, it, it was when the dunk contest was real big, but he jumped over one of those convertibles mm. uh, and dunked it. It was crazy. I don't know if he still holds the records or not. But well, Roger Sherman in the chat. I've just seen this jumped up, and he's he's put uh, world class. Is anything above forty? So. Yeah, you're you're a bad mother fluffer, mate. Hey, white boys can jump. They can indeed, mate. They can <laughs> indeed. There's probably going to be other stuff. And he said, "Here we go." Jordan jumped forty six or forty seven. Well, yeah. World. Here we go. World record is sixty five inches. Holy shit! Just flat footed vertical. I'm assuming so, mate. Yeah, I'm assuming. See, I, don't, so. I don't. I'm not sure what you call um, when they're running and jumping on the box, but. Yeah, I'm not quite as good at that. Um, I'm much better at just flat, you know, flat jumping. I love Birds. anything like that. It's amazing. Hermes Desperini with a super chat. Mate, thanks for your super chat, brother. And uh, one of the original troll army there with the Hermes Desperini. And he's put roll time. <laughs> roll time. Bird, st- yeah. But a bird uh, is standing or jumping and your leg's not coming up. Henry Ruggs only got a 41-inch vert, and that's like 95th percentile. But if you can, in any, for me, if you can, in any format, jump 50 inches, I'm impressed as hell. Well, I'll tell is. you what, because it sounds like I got some doubters. When I get off of this thing, I'm going to go over it's here hard. and film it. I'm going to film it with my tape. <laughs> That's how we roll, Justin. Yeah. That's how we friggin' roll. I just hope I don't fuck up this time. <laughs> yeah, do not let your goddamn kids <laughs> miss that match with, uh, with Paul Tower. Right. I'm anyway, we should probably talk match. about some arm wrestling, mate. You know, I, right. I, love, I love talking about jumping with my missus, but arm wrestling it is, son. So let's go back a step. Okay. Craig Touye. You called Craig out on the left. I would have liked to pull Craig. You got a thing about Craig. I know he's been on your radar for a long period of time. Tell me sort of what what the script is there. Where did that start? Why do you want that so bad? Is it just a respect thing? Uh, I mean, he's just always been the man under 200 in the South. Um, him and Chad, Chad's not nearly as active. Um, even though I still want to pull Chad in the future, Mm -hmm. you know, honestly, I think Chad's the better arm wrestler. Um, I think Craig may be a little bit stronger, but overall, I think, you know, the better arm wrestler is Chad. Um, he's going to come at you with a few different moves, whereas Craig's pretty much, you know, this way, but, um, pretty much I'll take you back. Um, the first time we ever arm wrestled, the only time we ever arm wrestled, um, was I think it was 15, 2015 or six, something like that. Yeah. Tony had this big round Robin, um, in Wisconsin mm-hmm. and, uh, he won. I ended up pulling them like sixth or seventh out of 10 guys. Um, 
I didn't have shit for him by the time I arm wrestled him. I actually got up there intending on slipping. And um, he went this way a bit instead of this way. And just I just fell right in the hook. And I just, you know, stood up like here, you know. But um, no, I mean, he's just, to me, like I said, he's the guy under 200 pounds in the South. And I'm, I, w- I want to be that guy. And uh, I, he came to Alabama State. I didn't pull right-handed for uh, mostly reasons I was telling you about. I've been having this elbow pain, and I don't want to pull Craig Tooley a half step. You know, I, I didn't plan. I didn't even know he was coming till the week before, yeah. and I had already not planned on arm wrestling at all. I wasn't even going to pull left-handed. I was just going to riff and commentate, which I ended up doing along with arm wrestling left-handed, which mm-hmm. is much more of a job than I thought. Yep. And my my head was pounding so hard after that tournament, you know, running the mic the whole time. And I love Glenn to death, but um, um, Denise not coming really screwed us. We was we were like a bunch of chickens with our head cut off around. But um, long story short, we didn't pull there. Um, I I got with Billy, you know, like I was telling you, um, you know, told him I wanted to pull Varez and Craig. Yep. Neither one wanted to pull for whatever reason. I think personally, it's not a stab at anybody. I think it's because he wasn't as far, you know, he wasn't back to his normal self like he thought prior to Alabama State from his surgery because yeah. he got hemmed up. You know, he got hemmed up by uh, Robbie, which Robbie's a strong ass dude. Y'all going to see that this next weekend. Uh, I talked him into coming to Hawthorne and he's going to pull the 185 oh, class. Yeah. yeah very much on my radar no no no, yeah. don't know a lot about him don't know a lot about him but he's really on my radar and the man looks like a friggin athlete yeah well he's he's stupid strong um he's come to a couple of practices with us he's really strong um my only advantage i would say over him is experience technique you know s- small things he can pick up if he can pick up he will definitely go to the next level how big um, is he Houston? I think he's a little bit light right now. I think he's like 190. He's planning on pulling the 85 class, but I've seen him as big as 200, 205. Is um, he tall? Yeah, he's. A, I think he's an inch taller than me. He's, he's you know, mm-hmm. he could be 76 if he wanted, you know, if he really bear it down. He's got, he's got a lot of kids like me. Pretty sure, I think he runs his own uh, business too. It's uh, manual labor stuff too. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's really, to me, something's really got to be paying off or really mean something to me to cut weight. Yeah. Um, you know, but anyway, going back to Craig, um, yeah, I, I told Billy that and he didn't, you know, he didn't want to pull whatever. He, he was down to pull before that. That was my thing. But like I said, I, you know, I didn't tell anybody. I didn't say anything because, you know, he hadn't been long come off surgery. And personally, I don't want to beat Craig and he's not at 100%. You know, yeah. that's just me. I don't want to go get that win. And, you know, when I beat you, I want you to know that I'm a better arm wrestler than you. You, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you I don't want, want you to be, to like, it's not a hollow victory. You want it to be yeah, at the man's best. Yeah. Well, I mean, like when I pulled Rob, he was better than me. You know, there's no, I can say, oh, well, the ref did this, the ref did, well, they didn't, mm-hmm. you know, they didn't. That the, the man just straight up beat me. Um, and that's, that's how I like to win. I don't, you know, and some matches are so close. It does seem like it comes down to something like that, but that's mm-hmm. never my goal. You know, like my goal next weekend, I want to win three to zero as fast as possible. Yeah. I want to, you know what I mean? I don't want to be in a long ass match and it be three to two off. You went in the elbow foul. Screw that. You know, yeah, you're looking to tuck him in quick and get it. And particularly with Paul. I mean, yeah, I'm not do, trying to hang not, out. <laughs> you do not need to be getting in grinders with that dude because he can, no. he can do just that, you know. Well, he, he's willing to sacrifice this whole thing. You mm. know what I mean? If he if he gets in a spot, and it's tough with guys like that, man, especially with long arm guys like that, because you can't go but so far this way, you know. And when they engage that shoulder, I mean, as soon as you come in, you're just going down his arm. So. Do you feel like you're the, the 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 heavy underdog coming in because Paul's the guy that's had the reputation as the lefty 
as such a solid lefty for so long in North America. And well, and it's transcended the weight classes, hasn't it? You know? Yeah. It's the one yeah, that's, that's he's gone through part. those classes. He's, he was, I want to say 65s. He was, wasn't he? He was yeah. 65s. Yeah. Then he went into middles. And, in, and, all, and I remember, oh, shit. What event was it? There was one event. Was it Atlantic City, WAL? And he pulled the open class way in. I'm pretty sure it was 165. Somebody could correct me, but I think he was 165 that day, won the left, and then went into the open class and was cracking some big lads lefty. And I'm talking big lads, you know? Yeah, I don't doubt it. Up. And I, 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 that was the first time he came on my radar, and I thought, holy shit. That dude's yeah. lefty. Serious. Well, you he's know. beaten me every time I've pulled him left-handed. I mean, I've, granted, I've beaten him every time we pulled right-handed. But, you know, he's the only guy that has multiple wins on me, and I have zero, mm. zero wins on him. And uh, he, like you said, he's beat me at 65 multiple times. Uh, when we both went up and pulled uh, middleweight in 2017 wall yeah. finals, I mean, I beat Froda, freaking uh, Todd Hutchins, uh, you know, a couple other badasses. And I get to this guy and still lose. Mm. So, so it's, it's kind of personal for me. Yeah. Um, so he was a guy you really wanted to knock off. And, 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 and if you do, do you believe that gives you the nod from a lot of people as being the man at that weight class lefty? I think it's pretty undeniable. I mean, who's beat him left-handed under mm. 200 pounds? <laughs> you know what I mean? And if I go beat you three, diff- you know, three times – um, in a legitimate super match. I mean, I wouldn't consider myself overall a better left-handed arm wrestler than you because you've obviously achieved a lot more than me left-handed. But at this current moment, I am better than you. So, you know, that's... We'll, we'll come back to that as well, mate. But it's got a super chat coming. Whiskey Clone 97 thanks for your super chat, brother. Much appreciated. And he's put, uh, Justin, is there any Europeans that are directly on your radar? Either arm after your match with Paul. Uh, and he's put Vrez excluded, obviously, because obviously you've, you've yeah. spoken about Vrez in, in this uh, in this cast. But um, any guys that are particularly on your radar, and it's probably, mate, weighted towards the whole thing with that Engin's trying to pull off with the East versus West. Uh, yeah, and I, I love that thing. Um, I hear something I left out, too, because um, you brought up other European arm wrestlers. Mm-hmm. Um, right before... Um, or excuse me, two days after I solidified my match with Paul, like I bought plane tickets, stuff of that, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, man, how do you pronounce his name? The guy from Kazakhstan. It's like number one left-handed, 76. Tolga. Hmm? Tolga. Say again? Tolga. Man, I'm trying to – I don't want to get it wrong. He's from Kazakhstan. I know that. Yeah. Um. um Anywho, exactly what you mean. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to remember how to pronounce his name. I'm so shitty with that though. Give me two um, minutes. It, it came into my head then for a second and then went out. He's world champion, I think, right now. Yeah, it's it's the match um, Tony had. Yeah, him. the match Tony just had up. Yeah. Um yeah. Anyway, he called me uh first or er, messaged me and asked me, you know, did I want to come pull? Uh offer me, you? you know. Offer me my you know, gun. way out there. Smells gun. Mazgan Shemaev. Yeah, that sounds way closer. My frigging brain failed on me. You know, when you no apparent reason, your brain gives up. And I'm like, yeah. I know who that is. I know who that is. I know that. I'm like, who the fuck is that? Anybody Real play? fast hooker, from what I've seen. Yeah. Nobody's put it in the chat yet, I don't think, though. Yeah, anyway, uh, Mazgan Shemaev. He, uh, he got in contact with me, wanted to pull um, June, uh, first week in June. It was like exactly three weeks after my match with Paul. If it had been five weeks, I probably would have said, yeah. Hey, you know but, what? I miss clearing here, mate, because I know yeah. that he contacted you. I know he contacted Tommy Holland. I know he contacted via Cobra, Tony Katowski. Mm-hmm. So Mars yeah. was going, he was, he, but it was going to be in Kazakhstan. Yeah. Well, he had contacted me. Um, and then pretty much when I said, no, you know, I can't do it. Or I asked him to swap the date. Yeah. And, um, he pretty much never got back with me. And um, Cobra called me about, I don't know, a week later. Hey, you know, and as soon as, as soon as I seen his number, I knew what he was calling about. 
and I, you know, I went ahead and told him. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I was like, I can't do it, brother. You know, I just, you know, he's like, well, who would you, who would you recommend? You know? And I was like, to be honest, I knocked out probably the, you know, other than Tony, the top two guys I would have recommended with me and Paul and Tony's the only other lefty at 176 pounds I thought could compete. And, um, mm -hmm. From what I spoke with Tony too, that match actually fell through from just miscommunication. Tony kind of told him, uh, give me a few days. And mm -hmm. I guess that means it's canceled in, uh, Kazakhstan or whatever, but, um, which kind of, kind of worked out. I think he's got a match with Egan's on Egan's thing now. Right. I believe he has mate. Yeah. Oh, Jack Valadz has just come in, in the chat. I was going to Yeah. Cheers, brother. Thank you, Jack Valadz. I had a brain freeze for no apparent reason there, mate. I don't know what the frig was wrong with me. Uh, but yeah, thanks for that for the for the tip. Much appreciated. It. But um, yeah, the, the to be honest, mate, I think the Kazakhstan lads, all of them, in or around uh, that that weight class, anybody you pull from Kazakhstan's a bad one. I don't think they do a bad one. You know, yeah. all the lads that you that go on the international circuit, killer. I mean, Tolga, the guy that I mentioned initially, uh, another crazy lefty. You know. Super fast, super strong. See him crack. I saw him crack uh, Morozov a couple of couple of weeks ago. Uh, practice table pulling, so different. But if you can yeah. do anything with those big lads like that, you're a beast. Yeah, I mean, you know, and and guys like that, it's a whole, you know, it's a whole different kind of training for me when I when I arm wrestle somebody like that. Uh, I don't feel like I have. To, I feel like I have to be more so on my arm wrestling game so to speak, more than my strength game. You know sure. what I mean? Like, not to say those guys, guys aren't strong, but I could be a lot stronger than them, but they're that much better at arm wrestling or that much better at timing mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, things of that nature. So, especially when you go to compete over there, you know, their their cadences are different. You know, their, their riffing is slightly different. You know, not necessarily the rules, but the way they go about things. Um, if you... I mean, I'm sure you've you've competed all over. So you you come to America and compete, and guys are just grabbing the shit out of you, you know, and trying to load up and all mm -hmm. that shit. You don't you don't get any of that over there, none of that, you know. And I I don't mind that, even though I'm not the guy squeezing the shit out of you because I'm not trying to blow my arm up. I like it because it gives away what you're doing, you know. I don't even have to think about what you're doing. You're showing me. So when I compete over there, I have to be a lot more on my game of paying attention to what they're doing, what I need to be doing, preparing, you know, as watching video on these guys, stuff like that. Um, and actually pay attention to what the fuck the ref is saying, even though I don't understand what they're saying, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, was there, is there any other particular lads that have got, that have got on your radar from Europe in terms of, because you went over to Moldova, you pulled over there. Um, did, did you come back from that experience having spotted a few lads and thinking, oh, we match up well, or have you seen guys in competition? Um, I don't know you've experienced the likes of Tom Holland, Giannis Amelins a couple of times. Yeah, you know? I'd love to pull Tom. Um, uh oh, uh oh. Uh, you still with me? Yeah, yeah. All right, my truck cut off. Um, yeah, I'd love to pull Tom or, or Giannis again, obviously. Um, uh, the one guy that I that I remember from over there, because uh, I I think probably because during the match I hurt my arm. I'm um, trying to remember how you pronounce his name because I, I butcher all of these. Um, is it, it's, it's the P L A M something? Shit. Not oh, Plum and Dimitrov. Yeah, that sounds right. Another bad mom, mate. Yeah, well, you know I don't pick the losers. Was that right or left arm? Do you pull plumbing? Oh, uh, right. And um, I mean, I, I felt good that day. Um, I don't know. Uh, the, the, like I said, the the refing threw me off a little bit. I got flashed by somebody. I don't even I don't even remember his name. Um, I, I actually pulled with him afterwards. Blew through him. Um, but the the cadences threw me off. So anyway, I felt like that flared my tennis elbow up a little. But I, you know, I didn't. It wouldn't bother me, but mm -hmm. when I pulled him, we loaded a little bit in the strap, and when that man yanked like this, all of that shit, I had a big uh, knot on that point of my elbow. It went away after about two days, but 
yeah, he felt real strong. I remember that, you know. Oh, um, yeah. Flamin's world, world class. Yeah. To be honest, mate, all of the Bulgarian lads, Bulgaria is another absolute hot bed of talent. I mean, yeah. so many. I'm sure you've seen it, but have you seen Bojidar? Uh, in Engin stuff, he, he won the 78 kilo sort of elite mm. event that, that Engin had. So impressive. Uh, what always amazes me about Bojidar is his, his ability to get into screaming, career ending death wars. And two minutes later, do it again. Yeah, I and don't. He, I wish I had that. <laughs> he, he, he seems to be, he's got incredible red line but also can do it again and again and again and again. I'd love to know who it was who you pulled uh, outside of Plum, and I'm trying to remember, think back who you arm wrestled over there. There was a, uh, there was a guy. You know where he was from? I, there was a, the one that beat me, I'm not sure. Um, I, I remember I beat a guy with glasses. I want to say he was from England or the UK. It was a taller guy. You sit down real low like this, you know. Um mm -hmm. uh, and then I, I'd have to go back and look, to be honest. Yep. Okay. Um, I just distinctly remember him because we talked afterwards. He spoke a little bit of English. And, um, you know, the only other guy I really, really remember was um, uh, Oleg, which, you know, I mean, can't really forget him when you arm wrestle him. Yeah. Yeah, there's it's so many, whole... so many powerful lads over there. But again, we're, ha, am I right in thinking you were sort of between weight classes that time as well? Yeah, I had just uh, me and Todd both had just pulled um, a card. He just pulled Mauricio, uh, Arcio. I'm sorry, and um, I can't remember who I just pulled. I can't even remember, but we both had to cut weight, you know, pretty like instantly mm -hmm. um, after those cards. And because uh, to be honest, we didn't even know if the stuff was going to go through. Yeah, you know, I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong, Cobra was doing the whole thing. But there was very little communication, you know. So all I know is I got two tickets. We'll fly over here. Hopefully, you know, I can fly back. But And I'll say to this day, man, that was a great – that was probably my favorite event ever. And it wasn't even – I'll say the trip itself because, I mean, we stayed over there uh, for a week, yeah. a little over a week. And, um, I mean, we've seen the entire countryside pretty much of uh, Moldova. You know, it's wine country. And we've seen, we probably went to four or five different wineries. Uh, they had the largest underground winery. It was pretty. My wife loved it. She loved it. But what was amazing to me is we land and uh, we're getting off the plane. For one, I've never got off the back of a plane and the front of a plane. So we're getting off. Uh, I don't know why we don't do that here, but mm -hmm. we should. But we're getting off and there's a guy holding a sign with my name and John Brzezink's name. And I walk right past it, you know, and I get on the little, what I call a caterpillar bus, you know, with my wife and we're in here like this. And John's like, hey, hey, you know, I'm like, well, talking to me. He's like, yeah, we got a ride over here. They got a freaking limo. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they pick us up. We go through the private section of the plane. They don't even check our bags or anything. And, uh, you know, the whole time we got a BMW in front of us and behind us. And every time we get out, tall ass men with earpieces get out and say some shit in suits. And, you know, I'm constantly paranoid as hell because I'm like, are these guys with us? Or, you know, yeah, what's, you're, what's going you're on? in the born identity all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, the closer we get to our hotel, you realize that where we're at is not that wealthy. And, uh, you know, the hotel we're staying in, though, it was way beyond a five star i mean it was it was nice amazing but uh you know they don't have ice over there so if you ever go and uh you need ice just carry your own <laughs> yeah. oh jack well, we, we had... got here mate he said uh you pulled it eckley well if you did yeah that's a bad mother fluffer right there mate is that uh, is that the guy that beat me or the guy I beat I'm assuming that he means that's the oh Nicholas Hemmel's just coming with the Nicholas Hemmel's just coming with the same thing yeah Iraqli, so I mean you got a you got a rough draw dude you got Iraqli you got obviously you got all in shock, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, rough. Yeah, uh, I don't I think there was a, a weak guy in that class, and to, I think I placed sixth or seventh or something like that. I mean, I'd have won one more match. I'd have been in the top four. Yeah, um, that's a rough class. But, dude. 
to be fair, Todd Hutchins got fifth yeah. in his class, mm-hmm. and he got his ass waxed by uh, I think he, two or three different people. Yeah, I think he lost to Alex. He is, lost, is it Alan Makia? Makia. He lost to him three times. Yeah, I Mackie was standing right him. there. And uh, I'm trying to remember who the hell nailed him. Makia um, flashed him, didn't he? Yeah, three times. Um, yeah. Todd fouled one time. He fouled another. Did he beat, and, did uh, he, did he beat Crassy? And he definitely he definitely beat Sasho that day. Yeah, he beat Crassy and Sasho. And um, what's the other guy? Uh, I don't remember who the hell he Prudnik. Beat. I think Prudnik's the other guy. Oh, Prudnik beat it was that beat him. Yeah, yeah. Prudnik yeah. did. It was Prudnik. Evgeny beat him, yeah. Yeah. So, mm, tough, tough competition, was- mate, but great. Yeah, I was impressed with uh, what did you say? His name was Alan. I, I never you, seen yeah. the guy, and he was really he was cool. not a big guy. I mean, yeah. and he flashed him like two different ways. He flashed him inside and outside. So mm-hmm. it's like shit because I'm screaming at Todd, fucking, you know, load up or something. Shit, what are you doing? Oh, well, we just had a super chat come in from the king, the undisputed oh. king. Of super chats on my on my lives. This this is the man yeah. right here. This this guy and a fella called Matt tickle my limits, Larrett. Or, uh, but Stephen Penner is the king of the super chat, and he's coming with one straight off the bat. And he acknowledges that he has a threat on my channel, and it's but you can go and tickle my limits, Larrett, if you think you're going to beat me in a donation war. Hi, Neil, oh. my son. Would Justin ever want to pull RVJ again? Of course. What do you mean? To to be fair, I'm only one of three people to pin this arm other than Todd. So I'm actually you know, surprised he's not in the chat, you know. I haven't uh, seen anything from him in the chat. I'm surprised he's usually on. Right. He's got enough kids, he shouldn't be doing anything but watching kids. That's true. <laughs> yeah, lying. But he could be I think, uh, uh, excuse me, mate. Seal beat him one time. I beat him one time and I I think Craig pinned him one time, didn't he? Did he? Did Craig get him? I think he did. If he didn't, I'm going to tell you that one was close enough. I'd have counted it. Yeah, it'll do. But okay. yeah. But it were, I know he was on a solid run when you arm wrestled him. And yeah. you, uh, yeah. And you, you shot just, him out of the gate big time. I, I look back on that and I, uh, you know, I was having a little bit of that issue I was telling you about, and I had been doing a lot of traditional workouts to mm-hmm. try to put on size. And that was the biggest I've been probably ever. Yep. Um, I mean, I weighed in like 201 with my clothes on and um, I don't know. I just blew up so fast. I don't, you know, and I think I, I keep blaming it because in the second match, when I hit, I hit a good position. And when mm-hmm. I went to go sideways, I could feel a lot of pressure on my wrists. And I kind of stopped momentarily and I should have just stayed there and I go, fuck it, you know, and go anyway. And then you end up pulling with your hand back. Yep. And as you know, usually when you pull your hand back, it's no good after that. So mine's not, not against a guy like RVJ anyway. Yeah. And particularly if you're not the lad that pulls like that ordinarily, you know, if you're not someone who, yeah. who does that a great deal, we got uh, a question from Jason Merlo. Uh, the man Jason Mur- Merlo. I'll tell he's you what, that'll be a good one. Uh, have you pulled Jason ever? No, he's been wanting a piece, and uh, we just hadn't clicked on dates, really. You, it's an interesting one. Interesting. Yeah, one. I hate pulling those tall arm guys. Mm. And, and and he's got a lot of similarities with you. Loves to, very, very good in the hand and wrist. Very strong hand and wrist. Very good top roller. It, 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 it's And very good both arms. Mm-hmm. So that'll be... Uh, That'd be a dance right there. And he's just put, have you ever had any serious injuries? Serious injuries when arm wrestling, mate? Yeah, I mean, I would call these <laughs> pretty ones serious. You, I mean, the ones you're nursing <laughs> now are pretty shit. Yeah. I mean, if you can't, I'll say this. I went to um, I went to Max out Monday on my bench. Mm-hmm. And um, it's something I added back in just because I feel like I'm, I, I feel like I'm, you know, I get a little extra something. Anyway, I warmed up, I put a 225 on there and I was warming up and I could tell, you know, in the tops of my elbows when I come down, you know, about right here, I could feel it a lot in my left, uh, my right. And I'm like, screw it. You know, I'm going to go for it anyway. Anyway, I 
I put what I failed on there last the week before that, which is like 325 or something. Yeah. Now I got 320. Yeah, I put 325 on there. Mm-hmm. And uh, I got it about right here. And it just, I don't, I'm not a guy that comes down fast either. You know, I like to control the weight. Like I don't, I don't arch my back and all that shit. And, yeah. um, you know, which is, that's a good weight for me because I'm, I'm not a good bencher. Um, you got long arms just, as well, aren't you? Yeah, you and you know what? People thick. don't. Yeah. yeah, people don't think that matters. I swear, I tell people that all the time. If, if oh, that nothing. matters, of course. It like if you got little T Rex arms, you're only coming up this far. I'm coming up, you know. Yeah, but it's anyway, it's physics, isn't it? Of course, it matters. Yeah, but you know, it. I can tell, and I'm like, ah, shit, leave it alone. You know, I went home, iced the shit out of it. I got my little massage gun, and I got a massage appointment next Tuesday try to rub it out of there but yeah i mean i haven't had any arm breaks or um or uh, tendon tears i'm pretty sure both of them got some micro tears going on because i get this weird burning feeling just periodically right in the you know in the tendon in the midst of your bone joint right there and And you've seen you've had that how long a couple of years you reckon you've been dealing with it yeah for sure this one I guarantee you on my right arm, which is, and I'm, I, you know, I hate saying this, but it's one reason I got out of let the, I didn't mind going up because cutting weight affects that shit. And it yeah, would be so it. much worse when I would cut weight and pull 65 that I would, I wouldn't want to go here. I would just want to go here. So with guys that I can't go here with, and I try to go back to this, it's just not as strong as it was. And, yeah. um, and it was, I don't know, <clears throat> I mean, it still hurts when I'm heavier, but it's not nearly as bad. But I can't lift super heavy hammer curls in mm-hmm. the gym. Like if I want to do a real heavy static hold, you know, five, 10 second static hold, I don't feel comfortable doing that. Because um, when it hurts, it fucking hurts for two or three weeks. You know? Yeah. That's why I say uh, you talk about that. I mean, we can get, oh, just got a super chat. We'll knock this one over. It's the man. He's not playing games. Stephen Penner back in. Oh, he just clarified this. He's put Craig pinned RBJ once in their current match. Uh, Bart's yeah. wife, yeah, called an elbow foul, but they still gave Craig the win to tie up the score. But uh, yeah, going. Thanks for that very, very much, Steve, for clearing that up, mate. I would have gone back and checked it. I didn't have Engin on the on the on the watch out for it, but here's one for you, mate. With uh, you talking about training heavy, what did you make of the whole thing with Ryan and the? 80 key and Uncle John's latest, uh, yeah, it's put shit load of weight on here and drive it through the elbow sideways. Give us yeah, your take. You, you like your technical arm wrestling, and how do you I, see? I, that? I mean, I do similar lifts. Um, I don't like to, I feel like the heavier you go, the more prone you are to injury. So, um, I like to, like that particular lift, I don't use a strap to mm-hmm. just go around my, my wrist. I grab a towel from this angle, yep. you know, and similar to the same angle, and I, I do it with the towel. And the reason you're not going to do as much weight, and to me, anytime I'm doing a arm wrestling exercise, I like to squeeze really hard. You know, I like to yep. have to squeeze. To me, that activates your tendons way more than just say you're just wrapping it around there and you're just pushing, you know. Mm-hmm. Um I'll say this when I'm doing therapy workouts, if I squeeze something and it can be 10 pounds, I can tell it hurts. If I just grab it, rest it in my palm and move it, it doesn't hurt. So that, you know, it tells me something. Um, but I, I particularly don't like lifting super heavy and those joint driven, uh, you, in my opinion, he hadn't fucked his elbow up enough. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I worry for him, mate. I really do. I really do. Finn Mason not- coming with a super chat, mate. Thank. <laughs> Cheers, brother. I th- appreciate that. I I can't read that off. People be slapping the shit out of me. This is a uh, hyphen pants pick up. Is the ultimate kryptonite to under the table talk. Oh, you know I've had a lot of messages about pulling Mike today. MTT knows not to go under the table because of venomous bite of the python. Friggin' hell, mate. Don't tell me misses that. I don't get enough as it is. Uh, that's why he's never been. Well, you know what? <sighs> he has beat me. He has beat me. I have lost a couple of pins to Mike. 
Uh, I got a good record against Mike, but Mike's got a decent record against me too. So, uh, and right now, big Michael Todd, the Michael Todd that's out there now, the monster. I don't know, want to walk past that motherfucker. He looks strong right now. Yeah, he does. Ridiculous, mate. He, yeah. he looked strong in his last outing, if you ask me. I mean, he he stayed, you know, well above the table for the most part. I wanted to see him pull the van. I, I wanted to see. I mean, not not taking anything away from the Devon match. Great match. Sure, it's going to be a cracker, but I, I, I wanted to see. Who do you got? I got Mike, actually, mate. Really? Yeah, I do. I, I got Mike. No, I'm, I'm, I'm going to guess open, why. You know? Let me, let me guess open. why. Yeah, that, that's, that was going to be my guess. I think that LeVon has been so dominant that when he can't pin Todd the first three or four drives, he's not going to know what to do, in my opinion. It's right? just the, the, the weirdo factor with the Kings, the first time you experience yep. that style of arm wrestling, and when Michael throws that on you, it is a really weird what the moment. And it, yeah. and it, and it does throw you out of your game. And if you're an orthodox arm wrestler, and it's it's like anything else. It's you know people. If 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 Levan is so much more powerful that he can just put him away super super quick, yeah, I get it. But if you look back at the history of Michael, nobody runs through him, and the guys you know, that do have success usually have it the second time around. Yeah, but like I was I was gonna say like Truben, you know. I thought Truban did a really good job the second time he pulled him in this in his super match. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, I think it was four to four to two. It, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because Truban, I think, had been studying Devon's Arm Wars video. He'd been studying the match in Manchester and he, he tried to emulate it and he did a great job. Yeah. And he very I think he was actually a better uh, arm wrestler at that time. He was working his technical technical the technical side yeah. of things was working better for him. Uh, he's gone more towards pulling with power. But that's the it's 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 one of those matches, Levan and Mike, where you do feel like that ace weirdo card in the Kings would create real problems for Levan. Uh, but I don't know. Levan is an exceptional arm wrestler and exceptionally strong. And the thing is with with Levan, we haven't really the recent version of him. We haven't really seen him redlined, and no. we don't know his technical arsenal. And yet when you watch one of those videos with the Georgian lads pulling and they've got that many guys there of that level of ability, can he do it? Can he get into a yeah. dead press? I don't know. Maybe he can. Maybe he can. I don't know. He may not need to. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> maybe he's so much stronger and so big and dominant that he just goes right well, through. That's, he goes. That's the, to me, that's the, one of the big parts. He's a big human. Like no. he's a large human. He's not just really big. He's you know a large human being. And like what a great structure. ball that is as well. How oh, frigging right. cool is that man? What a top bloke. I mean, every time you speak to that lad, he is just uh, and Vitali La Latin, La Latin and and and, and Lavan are just great guys. They're just genuinely yeah. straight up top class lads. You know, but usually from big guys like that have never really had a problem with confrontation. Mm. You know, <laughs> so they, you know, I'm just happy. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, how do you how do you see Devin and Mike going? Then, um, you know, I can. I mean, I see it going similar to the last the last way. I mean, the last Even time. Mike, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've. It's hard for me because uh, I knew. Devin was going to be forced to go inside or attempt mm -hmm. to, you know, go inside. I thought he would try to go outside. And I, I'm trying to remember, did he try to go to outside? I think he lost his hand on the first attempt because he sat back. Yeah, sat he back was trying to wait. Exposed and then dove on it with the shoulder, and that was that. I think, he would have, I think he, he would have better success um, hitting in a top roll off the go, but I don't think he can now hit Mike. Mike's way faster than people think. Even when he catches over here, look where he starts. He starts here. This man moves his whole body to this mm -hmm. position, you know, really, really quickly. And um, the other thing as well with Mike is, like you say, it's that it is 
he's made so many gains in the critical areas. I think you said a moment yeah. ago in his last outing prior to that with, with Dave, mm -hmm. he, uh, he didn't look all stretched out and he stayed pretty tight and was still able to get those moves down. Now you can say, okay, yeah, that's just Dave and Dave's style of arm wrestling and Dave has a bit of a problem. He, Michael's his bogeyman. Oh yeah, fair enough. What, whatever. Yeah, but at yeah. the end of the day, Michael's propensity to stay in those positions has improved. He's evolved. And I think he's also become more and more comfortable in that transition to that frigging horrible press. Yeah. And, uh, that's an art. I mean, that is a, that's an experience. Have you ever had Mike do that to you? Yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm on wrestle with Mike. The first time I ever, the first time I ever pulled him, he came to uh, Alabama for a practice. Um, he actually came for the, this, I don't know if he still sells the, um, the stuff. What is it? Uh, well, not the anyway. buy Salah stuff. Yeah, that's it was something like that. Yeah. So anyway, he come he come to one of our arm wrestlers' house to do that, and we pulled while he was there. And um, to my, I don't, you know, I'm sure he was he just got done training yesterday or before mm -hmm. he got there, or whatever. I was competing with this man's hand out of the strap. You know, I was like, okay, all right, I got something. You know, mm -hmm. and all it was is Mike's like me now. He don't yeah. like the finger bang. Let's go to the strap. You know, mm -hmm. so we go to the strap and I'm thinking I'm going to do a little something. And he's like, go. And I'm fucking, you know, nothing. Right. I'm like, you know, I'm going to put him in a hook and he's standing straight up. now. He's not on his yeah. on his knee or whatever. And he's like, all right, I'm going to roll you out and like that. Just all wrists. I'm like, Holy shit. What what's going on? You know, mm -hmm. like. Then he, um, anyway, he gets he gets down on one knee and he's showing me some things from that, uh, from the king's move position and how it, essentially how it works. All it is is a pull up. You know, I I can literally get on one knee, excuse me, and line guys up at my practice, yeah, and take all of their hands from one knee. Mm -hmm. You know, they can't hook me. Um, even in a hook, you know, I can still pull from that position. So I, I understand how that position works. Left handed. Um, that's where he hit me with the press because I actually took his hand in and out of the strap left-handed, but it didn't matter. It was almost like he was giving it to me just so he could get there faster. And it's so aggressive. And so, I mean, a lot, you know, oh. you, can get, you can get pressed by most people. I've been pressed by people with all over the world, different styles of that yeah. motherfucker. When he puts it, it, you feel like it a hurt. train has gone through your arm. It is nasty. He you know. knocked me clean off the back of the, fucking table and pin me in my corner over here yeah you know and the first time he done it you know i was like hey man fucking yeah, easy now <laughs> yeah you know you. he's like i really don't know how to do it slow see it just <laughs> well the fact right. he was driving that on todd uh showed that he's really keen to do it at the moment and he, he's in a good oh super chat just come in as well uh steven penner again mate undefeated this guy on the super chat, a bad man. He's like the frigging belt holder. And he's put his arm wars, a website where you can pay to watch an old match. Actually, brother, it's free. If you go onto the arm wars YouTube channel, you can watch a lot of matches. We've got matches on there from the old stuff that used to be produced on Eurosport, aired on there for like 11 years. We've, we've got a massive amount. Uh, we got all the classic matchups on there. Michael Todd Devon's original Acid Rain tie up. We got Yoshi Can I Ron Bath. If you've never seen that match, get your ass yeah, out of Because I'll tell you what, <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. Some absolute screamers. If you go through the archive of Arm Wars, mate, there's some matches on there. Let me tell you now. It's one of my favorite. I'll tell you, uh, we was talking about the Kings move. Uh, I actually had a Mike Solaris do that to me in uh, 2017, right handed. Mm -hmm. All right, so I got in a barn burner with uh, Kevin Robinson. Okay. And uh, I get over there, pull Mike right after that. I get up there, you know, we go to the strap. And I'm thinking, you know, it's the first time I ever pulled Mike. I'm thinking, just don't let him screw you. Keep your hand and you're good. So on go, I just lean back and try to keep my hand. I get about halfway down. I realize I got it. I start to go sideways and he hits the little. The, the, one of the tricks to the king's move, you watch the elbow, they'll pop it out to the side like this. Yep. You know, it won't be like this. It'll pop out to the side like that. Mm 
-hmm. Anyway, so it puts a tremendous amount of pressure on you this way. So you can't finish. And um, anyway, I'm trying to finish. I come back up, you know, regroup my hand, five or six drives. Anyway, he ends up beating me. And uh, that's, I don't even know if I've ever said that to somebody, but that's one of the reasons I was really excited about that match with Mike. Because I was like, I know I can beat this man. You know, I already know. I was worn out when I, you know, did what I did. So, Mm -hmm. but. Yeah. So there's, yeah, a, he never... there's a second part to Steve's question here, mate. Okay. He's put, okay. Does Justin have any future goals when it comes to arm wrestling left? Uh, maybe the hammer. So what are, I'm sure you do. What are you? What are your? I know you're chasing the the names and the recognition, but what's your sort of priority on that, mate? What, what do you put your your priority of uh, achievement going forward? I feel like if they made a left-handed hammer right now at lightweight or middleweight, that I'd be holding it. Mm. And to me. Um, you know, Paul is the only man that's ever stood in the way of me and a left-handed hammer, except for uh, Tony winning it the one year, and Tony yep. didn't beat me. Paul beat me. Um, but, yeah. I was, so, for me, next weekend is kind of like a hammer match for me without the hammer. You know, I mean, it to me, tr- the trophies are nice, you know, when I'm old and I can look at them and whatever. Mm-hmm. But for me, it's right now, it's right here for me i don't care about you know like this match i'm i'm almost getting paid nothing because i you know and i didn't ask for anything else because i that didn't matter to me this time you won't. I want to do this yeah this is the yeah. first match i wanted for a long time <clears throat> every other match was like hey do you want to pull so and so for s- such amount i'm like sure mm-hmm. you know but because every time wal asks me who i want to pull they never give me the guy you know <laughs> so yeah i'm like you know, the last couple of times i'm like why are you even asking me i've told you who i want to arm wrestle you know and so never, i'm gonna i'm gonna rattle a few names off in a minute mate first of all devon's classy finger is back in just for you mate i've got some water down you that, brother. have you seen that healthy option check that out mate and it's not even hot yet. so yeah, Devon's Classy Finger, thanks for your super chat, mate. Much appreciate that. And uh, let's talk about a couple of guys that we've talked about. Jason Merlo, obviously, who's another ridiculous talent. Kevin Robertson, you mentioned earlier on. How do you, how do you rate Kevin? Kevin's a really good arm wrestler. I don't think he gets out as much. Um, he's pretty – he's definitely big for maybe an 85 class. I don't big know if he can make 85. Class, yeah. Yeah, but and he's pretty big at ninety five. Uh, definitely tall, long arm. Mm-hmm. Um, I won't say that I underestimated him going into the match. I probably did a little bit, but uh, his, I mean, he was strong. You know, we ended up in a hook because um, I, I guess he was going outside and I was going outside, and it just went that way. But uh, definitely a, a guy that uh, I get lined up with. I'm not taking lightly. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, Definitely, he get out there a little bit, man. You know, beat a couple guys. It's all it takes. To me, he's right there with Robbie. You know, all it takes is this this next match, you know, or this next couple of tournaments or whatever. Yeah. I need to see more of Robbie. I need to see more yeah. of Robbie Russell and, and check out what. But I want to. I want to. We're just going to knock over a super chat real quick, and I know what's coming on this one. He said, "What's up, Neil?" And this is Michael Todd's calcified bone. Something I've got a lot of experience with, and you have as well, mate. And the uh, names y'all come up with is fucking <laughs> kill me. Bro. It's one of the things, isn't it? And he's just put what's up, army. Can you ask Justin's thoughts on penny trading? <laughs> fucking way for it'll be. Give him a minute. <laughs> what? Yeah, I don't. What yeah, is that? yeah, you fucking. They'll be. Uh, trust me, it'll be coming <laughs> in a minute, mate. You, you got to try and you got to think about the question. Think about what he's written and it's it, penny trading. So there'll be something to do with penny trading probably coming up in a minute. Okay. If you do have any thoughts <laughs> on penny trading, mate, but thanks for that. Michael's got the fat bone. Uh, Stephen Penner obviously feeling under threat from a few of these and he's come back in just to stamp his authority on things in the super chats. And he's put, here's the question of the day. A little bit of confidence in a man. Uh, how much do I have to donate to get Neil to pull again? Would you pull Tony? <laughs> Or maybe Sam for the hammer. Okay. All day. Mate, yes, I would. 
one big problem, all right? I am so much heavier than those guys. I weigh like 235, <laughs> 240 pounds right now. Of Lord and love. So so is that is that um you meant kilos or oh wait, I'm like uh I think the other day I was a hundred and nine kilos in the morning. That's like first thing out of it. What the fuck is that? 109 kilos uh, pounds. That's about 230, 235. Yeah, that's in the morning, dude. Yeah. So that's like out the shower on the scale, and I'm like 109. Yeah. So yeah. You're a little big. You're a little bit big. <laughs> yeah, and not in a good way. You know what I mean? Nothing good there. Nobody wants none of that. So, mate, I would pull again, but in uh, I'd, I'd have a way to go to get back into it. I haven't actually been on an arm wrestling table training for just over five years. So, you gotta be fresh, mate. It's a long I bet way your back. arms feel good. I'm okay, you know. I'm okay. Obviously, uh, I mean, you know the you know the situation. <laughs> Here we go, Michael Todd's calcified bone is back. Penetrating your mama. <laughs> I knew <laughs> the fuck. I knew it was coming. <laughs> Lovely darts. Uh, <laughs> it was just how long I it get, took to come through. Yeah. Man. I fucking. <laughs> yeah. I got a couple of those. Like, Mate, you know, on, it, on it. Or, Absolutely. You know, on Eileen. <laughs> Go on. I said, do you know Eileen? Uh, go on. Let's have it. I, I lean over and you kiss my ass. <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> Mate, these can go all night with it. Don't get these lads yeah. going. That'll be it. I'll tell you what, we'll never get off here. One thing I wanted to uh, to pick on, mate, earlier you said one of your things about pulling Craig was that you wanted to be recognised and, and, and perceived as the man in the South, all right? moji has got to be on that hit list then. Yeah, yeah. I'm just – to me, you know, Moser, I think, has the last win on Craig. I don't think he pinned him. I think he was on fouls, but I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. Um to me, I just been wanting to do this way before Dan Moser was even an arm wrestler, mm -hmm. you know. So, and um, I mean, I feel like I've been the, the, the guy at 176 to 185 for a long time in the South, and um, at certain times in the country. Uh, but I want, I want more. You know what I mean? I'm not. I mean, I don't walk around at 175 pounds anymore. Usually, I'm about 180, 185. Mm -hmm. uh, depending on, it, you know, if I've been training really heavily for, uh, you know, four or five months, I can be 195-ish. Yep. You know, I'm about 188 right now. And um, I don't like getting much bigger, which is really hard for me. I have to eat a shit ton of food. And, uh, but. You're like my I auntie Christ, aren't you? I'm like yeah. the other way. I can eat fucking celery and snow and be <laughs> putting, putting weight on me. It's like I'm well, you don't you don't live in the Amazon either. Yeah, that's you know? true. That, that is true. <laughs> but it's a shame I say I wasn't born in a hot country. If I lived in Dubai, I'd probably have apps. You know. Right. But I don't know. I know. Whoever built that that's Chinese so restaurant down the road's a bastard. <laughs> You know, because they've got a fucking lot to answer for, Justin. I'll tell you what. All right. That guy and the prick that invented red wine. Uh, Them two. You, my wife. Yeah. See, hey, I'm, me I'm and your a, wife uh, get on, mate. You get crack about. RVJ knows a bit about wine as well. He loves a glass of wine. Yeah. He don't mind a glass of wine. I'm, I'm a whiskey guy. If I'm going to drink, I like to drink ne whiskey. Next event, right? Next WAL event or when we're... You just... At the end of the night, mate, me and your missus can crack a bottle of wine. We'll be there for a while. We can get you get on the I'll whiskey, you'll we'll get on the red vino. Lovely darts. You need to go to Moldova then. Cause uh oh, they had the they had the best wine I ever tasted. And I'm not a you wine. You enjoyed it over there, did you? You really yeah. you got on the wine with your missus. Brilliant. Yeah. They they made some that was called um I think it was it's, we got a bottle, it's like ice on the front of it. It's a golden bottle. Mm -hmm. But uh they make they pick all the grapes when the uh, when the first frost comes and some yes. other bullshit. Anyway, it was really good. Yeah, they, they're, they're a big exporting nation now. We, we have uh, a lot of wine that comes into this country. 
uh, Moldova. So they're particularly their white wines, like the PG and things like that, come over here. It's they're doing well, mate. They're doing really Crickle well. In the environment. I think was, I think that was the name of it, Crickle Bar. Okay, I'm, I'm probably butchering that, but hey, if you enjoyed it, mate, that's the main thing. Let's uh, let's look at this chat and see what we got in here now. Yeah, uh, honky monkey with chubby Neil, mate. You have no idea. <laughs> you yeah, are. He, he might be a little bit of a big fella too. Yeah, you ain't. So yeah, I, I'm uh, I'm a similar size to what I was in Atlanta, mate. When we were out there, and I was finding it hot that day. So uh, you can imagine. Yeah, that that was that was the South, and in, in well, it was September. It wasn't that bad. Stephen Penn yeah. has just come in with another super chat, and he's put Neil, Neil made Cedric Lacola, uh, the Belgian lad, look like a bum. Just come, just came back, mate, and faced Juju or something. Maybe Bart would. If I, you know what, if I came, if I came back into uh, to arm wrestling, Stephen, I'd go in at a at a, a good level anyway. I'd like to pull somebody who was at a decent level, a pretty high level, because then you know, you know, I'd have to try and get some miles under my clock again. Get get arm wrestling. The way I would do it is I'd go out and take some ass whippings. The very best way, in my yeah. opinion, to get yourself up to you know, a level. I don't take uh, what I call Floyd Mayweather fights. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. I take Roy Jones Jr. fights. Yeah. Get out there, take your take your frigging licks, get whipped. I have no doubt in my mind that if I came back into the sport, I've got people around me that can sharpen them again. If I got down south and started pulling with lads like Tom, Tom Holland, Tom's a bad motherfucker. You know, get, yeah. get I got Paul Maiden over here. We got who's another good arm wrestler. A lot of the lads, there's a lot of up and coming lads in the UK. I mean, Adrian O'Dwyer, for Christ's sake, out of Ireland. Yeah. A lot of the Irish guys, solid as hell. So if you started mixing up with those lads, you'd get your ass handed to you for a for a while, maybe a couple of years. Uh, but it'd take that long to get yourself back up to a real level, you know, and you've got to commit. Well, you, to, you've got to you go. don't forget this either. You know, that's, that's what I try to tell people. I try to express that when I'm talking to them. I'm like, you know, there's only a f- handful of arm wrestlers that I've ever met. And I haven't met a lot of European arm wrestlers. I'm mm-hmm. speaking mostly on the, the places I've been, mostly stateside. There's only a handful of arm wrestlers who really, really understand the art that is arm wrestling. You know, they don't, they understand way more than one or two moves or um, how to be defensive or how to, you know, mm-hmm. they know what angles as soon as they put their arm on the table. Yeah. They can feel yeah. it. They can see it. You know, if you you don't forget stuff like that. No, I mean, it, it, but so Stephen's comment in there. He said, like, pull something like Juji or something. Um, yeah. For me, I'd be embarrassed pulling Juji, and that's no disrespect yeah. to Juji, unless I've lost more than I think. I I think I'd. Completely I think you smash Juji right now. Yeah, I'd, right I'd now. Pull Juji today. Yeah. It, you know, that ain't an issue. Uh, really not. But and that's not trying to be a prick or overconfident. I know exactly where I'm at, but I but I kind of know exactly where I'm at. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't yeah, want to. I mean, well, I mean, it'd be like you know, I I wouldn't. I mean, just just because everybody knows him, maybe, maybe a Holyfield coming back and trying to fight a nobody. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? He's not gonna fight a nobody. Come no. on. No, you gotta you know? you come in and and if I if I was gonna get into an arm wrestling match, I'd at least want to pull somebody. You know. As I said, I get out there, get my ass handed to me for a while, try and get myself back to a level. Who knows? Can I do it? We'd, we'd see. But it's not me. I never say never. Never say never. But it's not about me. This show's about Justin Bishop in the motherfucking <laughs> house. And I, I'm with so many things to talk about. I'm going to start there, mate. YouTube channel. You said a moment ago, not a lot of people yeah. know about the technical side of arm wrestling. Pay a lot of interest to the technical side of arm wrestling, and particularly from the North American crop of youtubers okay so pretty crowded marketplace out there at the moment but you've got some really good arm wrestlers jason merler we mentioned earlier on he started his own youtube channel chan shaw i saw another great arm wrestler chan shaw who's been really active recently and i saw that he'd started a youtube channel you've gone down the same route mate what's the plan for the youtube channel what's the because i know you've not really kicked in yet yeah well i mean we had plans at the when we started it you know we said screw it you know we're gonna go ahead and start uh doing it because i've always wanted to do it but i wanted to wait till we got the right equipment mm-hmm. all this other bullshit well you got fifteen hundred dollar phones now so it's a little easier but 
now, like I said, it's just timing to uh, to where me, my brother, and our camera guy can all be at the same place at the same time yeah. and try to annually pump, you know, pump one out a week at least. And um, the goal, though, was to make it like, uh, you know, nobody's putting videos out there where they're detailed explaining setups or they're explaining how to get out of this position or, you know, this strap position or what have you. Um, and nobody's done that since Devin, in my opinion, and Devin was the best at it, in my opinion. And I've been told I'm, you know, somewhat good at it, at explaining it. And I've obviously every arm wrestler out there knows that not everybody can teach arm wrestling. And I think, you know, I think if this can help a handful of arm wrestlers excel, that's, you know, that's my goal for the channel. Yep. Um, now we're throwing other shit on there mostly because uh, it takes 10 minutes rather than, you know, an hour of uh, setting up and showing these detailed things that I want to do. Mm -hmm. We're keeping that on there to try to keep the page relevant, so to speak. Um, you know, most, most of what you're seeing on the YouTubes are um, workouts, lifts, you know, and, and things of that nature which are, are not bad. They're just, in my opinion, making you this much better of an arm wrestler, whereas yeah. what I'm looking at is going to make you this much better, in my opinion. If so you it's grasp, not only the understanding, it's the articulation. Yeah. So you, you can so, put that, that across to the layman, to the guy who's coming into the sport brand new, and maybe raise their game significantly. And that's the kind yeah. of thing that it, it's not easy to do, is it? No, and, and you know, the way I feel about it, because I've actually – explain things to people who's beat me in large tournaments i won't put any mm -hmm. names out there but and you know i really thought to myself like you're stupid you know that was stupid why did you show them that you know and i'm like well it's at the end of the day it's got to elevate your game yeah you know what i mean especially if something you sh you have shown this person and they come whip your ass with that mm -hmm. well now you got to up your game you know so to me it's you know and I, i've watched mma since I was a little kid and I've watched the uh, evolution of the UFC and mixed martial arts mm -hmm. all together. And I feel like, you know, that comes from people actually watching and understanding how to fight, you know, how to, how to win fights. And um, eventually now you have actual mixed martial arts, you know, yeah. whereas now we have top rollers and hookers, mm -hmm. you know, and that's about it. Now, if we can get elevate everything to where every you know, almost everybody knows every move mm -hmm. or the basic four moves, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, then how good are you going to have to be to be a world champ then? And, um, you know, to me, when you, when you talk about arm wrestling like that, it, it grabs more people's attention. It's mm -hmm. not just. Jason Merlo just come into the chat and said, Justin does a good job in his videos of simplifying and breaking it down, which is exactly what you're talking about there. It's sort of getting that across to people and making sure that they, uh, understand the sort of nuances in a very simplified manner. And you, you're obviously good at that, mate. You're obviously good at talking to people. The people do warm to you. So is that some, would you like to make that a career after you sort of get off the table yourself? Uh, you know, I've done, let's see, I've done two seminars. Um, and I was underprepared. I'll say that, you know, I kind of went in there like, you know, well, I'm talking about arm wrestling. I mean, I'm, mm -hmm. I know how to do that and uh which they weren't bad i just look back on them i could have been a little more but i enjoy i enjoy talking about arm wrestling i enjoy um uh, you know answering any question i can answer i try to reply to all you know the messages i get which is one reason i you know went ahead and put the um put the page out there to you know try yeah. to get that going you know because i mean it's hard to explain things in a message you know and um but like I said, I got a couple of things I want to do. I want to do, you know, the mostly that for arm wrestling. And then I want to try to start a clothing line eventually um, that will have arm wrestling stuff and just uh, strength and physique stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, a, I'm hoping that some of y'all out there seeing this know, you know, somebody that knows somebody that knows how to do these designs because I'm not going to lie to you one of the reasons I haven't done this because I've had this idea for years and especially going back to the UAL days where we was actually on a shirt mm -hmm. I had so many people ask me for a shirt but they didn't want Jake on the shirt <laughs> so well, it's funny you, you know should say that, Justin Bishop because two names come to mind straight off the bat there are so many fabulous artists in in the, in the game of arm wrestling uh 
only today I was speaking to one of them, Hector Beltran, who yeah. is an outstanding artist. My guy, Sienna, mate, also amazing. I can send you some of these, but phenomenal artist. Absolutely phenomenal. So Hector's incredible. Another dude whose details I'll send you contacted me about doing a shirt for the for the channel, for the Supernatural Strength channel. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was speaking to uh, to Hector today about potentially doing a, an Arm Wars logo style design for him because we're looking at the Arm Wars side of things again. So, yeah, I can send you a couple of bits and bobs on that, mate. Uh, and I'm sure they'll do a really good job. Oh, Stephen Penny's come back in with a question for you, son. Here we go. He's the kid. How bad's this man? He's a an animal. <laughs> Yo, Justin, when you pulled Rob, did your thumbnail burst? Or what happened? Because people thought you hurt your knee or busted your nail in round two. Uh, I cut my my finger with my fingernail. When I come down, like, you know, like so, I just cut. Sliced your cut thumb. My, yeah, right on top of the nail there. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was all that was. Um, I don't know about my knee. I don't. Maybe I was hopping funny or something. Hey, funny, funny, uh, you mentioned that because I almost cut my damn thumb off about I don't know, months and a half ago. I don't know how well you can see that, but it's... Is that what, on a saw? Band saw or something? Yeah, uh, table saw. Yeah, you don't... Yeah, it went from it. about here all the way to the other side of the nail there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was pretty nasty. Um, actually, um, Kevin Robinson, uh, Paul had asked me about pulling him at the uh, Hawthorne event, and mm -hmm. I told him I wasn't sure if I was going to be, you know, I, didn't, I thought this thing, yeah, I thought this thing was going to fall off. I won't lie, mm. but it didn't. It's still there. Yeah, it's still it's, sensitive as shit. But you know, you got to watch those frigging power tools. You can't afford. You make a mistake with those once. With one yeah. of our top arm wrestlers, you know. Ted, did you know Ted Wilson? Uh, I Ted sound really familiar. Phantom weight guy, really good arm wrestler, excellent puller. He nearly bounced all his thumb clean up. I mean, he really went through his hand like from right across. You know, just man. Yeah. Just putting a piece of wood into a bandsaw, then flipped his hand over and ripped his hand into the saw, half a second gone, you know. And he's now yeah. got almost it's almost static. There's no movement in there. He's back pulling again, but you know, it's done obviously massive damage to his nerves and his hand and stuff. So yeah. I got Stick lucky. Shit. Yeah, you I didn't hit bone anymore. or tenon. I didn't have to, you know, just some stitches, luckily. But when it hit it snatched my hand down like this and actually knocked some of this nail off too. Yeah. And you're That's lucky funny. if it doesn't pull you into the saw. That's the thing. Yeah. Isn't it? It's yeah. just frigging terrifying. I man. just bought that saw that day. <laughs> so I did. Fucking hell, yeah. Recurring question in the comments is around, and I think we've sort of addressed it to some extent, but a lot of people very interested in what you think about the uh, Engin East versus West card. Have you been approached about that card? Are you interested in being approached about that card? I what haven't been mean? I haven't been contacted. I'm definitely interested. Um, I won't lie, a lot of those guys I don't know or not. I'll watch them and I'm like, oh, that guy, you mm -hmm. know. But as far as the name goes, um, but I'm sure if they call me, whoever it'll be will be a stud. I have yeah. no doubt. Um I personally have been waiting on something like this to, to uh, you know, somebody to want to do it because ever since really Armour's, nobody does this type of thing. Um, yeah. Other, you know, I mean, WAL allows you to come or did allow you to come to the tournaments. Other than that, I mean, um, so yeah, I'm definitely into that. And I, I kind of followed how it got started too uh, with him and Herman talking about the, the yeah. GoFundMe. Um, and I was like, yeah, that's a great idea. You know, I, I think I voted, you know, I uh, donate up to like 30 bucks or whatever, which I need to do when I get off of this because I said I was going to. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I don't mind doing it. And for me, that's even better because it's it's by the pullers for, for the pullers. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And not to say that an, a league or an organization is bad, but, you know, we know when money is involved, yeah. the sport the sport loses a little bit of purity. You know, it's not so much about who's the best. Mm -hmm. It's a little more about we got to sell this or sell that. If the best guy wins, so be it, whatever. But anything like this, you know, I mean, Egan's not going to set up any shitty matches. I don't feel like, um, 
I feel like he's a man of his word. So, you, you know, the things are going to pan out. Um, I've never met him, but just, you know, knowing the people I know, and things of that nature, I think it, it's a great idea. Yeah, there's certainly some, uh, you know, legacy lineups there. I mean, it's, it's about that. I think you hit the nail on the head with the purist comment, mate. I mean, Engin's as purist as it gets. He really yeah. is. I mean, the guy so. lives, breathes, and talks arm wrestling 24 seven. That's what he, it's in, it's the fire yeah. of the man's DNA. There's no doubt about it. And he's one of the greatest ever to do it, in my opinion. And I think in the opinion of most people, but Engin's uh, definitely trying his best to facilitate lining up opportunities where people pull at a high level. Uh, very similar to what we tried to do with, with arm wars in, in many ways. Um, mm. You try to do with arm wars. You're trying to put people in your path that are going to be horrible, horrible experience, yeah. but kind of a fucking cool experience, you know? Well, so you want to see and leave a piece of yourself in the match. That's the thing, isn't it? You know? Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting that he's doing that. And it's nice that the community's warming to it. And there's some great matches lined up already. You know? Yeah, I've seen... Um... Uh, a few of them, and Todd's pulling um, Zolf, yeah, 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 Haji, which they've pulled before, obviously. Yeah. Um, but time's passed. I always wonder with that, you know, I always feel sorry, kind of sorry for for Todd Zilla in some ways because the man's like 53, 54 years old. I mean, <laughs> and everybody talks about, you know, they'll talk about Ron or they'll talk about the guys who are not necessarily at the peak of the age for the sport. Nobody really. Tips the cap, it doffs the cap to, to Todd in that respect. Mm -hmm. Todd, 54 years old, that is a bad man. I don't think he's ever been this good. That's the thing. Like you say, uh, you know, he's kind of – other guys are kind of peeking out or starting their way down the hill. He's still climbing the hill, mm. you know. I mean, the last – I think he looked a little light the last time I seen him, but still yeah. – I mean, you've seen him pulling Michael Todd. Now, you know, that's practice pulling, whatever, but that's also Michael Todd who's not going to lose, yeah. you know, even in practice. Yeah, but, yeah he, you know. he, I'll tell you, I've got an enormous amount of respect for Todd. Todd's a frigging animal. A very, very uh, seasoned arm wrestler, pulled everyone anywhere, never – there's no weak matches. I mean, you look at that man's career – who the hell beats that man? You know what I mean? If you if you beat you get anything on Todd, fair play to you. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you my, right my, my left handed win I cherish, and that's left handed. Yeah, but he's held the hammer left handed. You know, I think more more than once. Yeah, I believe he has. Yeah, I think he's double hammer held a couple of times, hasn't he? So, yeah. So I mean, and um, I'm a guy who walks around, you know, at 180, 185. So, mm. you know, I take a lot of pride in that you know but i don't i don't try to throw that around because i choose to pull here just yep. like todd chooses to pull at super heavyweight you know i mean i could cut weight go go to 76 and i don't know if i could still do 65 i don't want to yeah I, was I mean, yeah i mean i could do it because i mean like i'm i'm a little fat right now i mean i could lean up and uh cut from 78 to you know that's usually what i would do you know i would be about low 80s Two weeks out, I would start cleaning up my diet, get to about 178-ish, and, you know, that last week. And um, – but I'll, I'll tell you something funny, too. Uh, the first time I pulled uh, UAL – I mean, uh, WAL, it was 2015. It was the regional thing. Uh, and I hadn't told Robert that I was going to pull it, you know, because mm -hmm. Robert hadn't done anything in, in a year, year and a half for me. And um, I was under contract – and uh, I liked his contract better. I got paid either way, you know, even if I didn't arm wrestle. But long story short, he hadn't paid me anything in like eight months, nine months. And he wouldn't give me any information. So I'm like, look, I'm going to pull WAL in three weeks, you know. So uh, I fly out with Doug. He was pulling um, – who was he pulling in a super match? Was it Jake Smith, I think? Man. Anyway, it was in California. We fly out there. You know, I'm still talking to Robert. Robert has this scale in his bathroom. It's like a $10,000 scale. Mm -hmm. You know, you grab the handles, you jump on it on your underwear. It tells you how much your bones weigh, how much body fat you got, all of this. So I'm like 178 pounds, 179 pounds, like a week and a half out from cutting to 65. And um, 
I step on this thing and it weighs me, I was at 3.0% body fat. Holy shit, it's like a walking yeah. down. I could, I was like, is this, this accurate? You know, I, I work out, but I'm not a physique, you know, I'm not a gym rat. I don't, I know 10% body fat is damn good. Mm. I did not know three was like dangerously low. That's like way, way lower than you want to be, which that wasn't my goal. I was just making weight. But yeah, I was, nice. I still yeah, got the paper cool. at home. 3% yeah. body fat, correct? What? That's like Bruce Lee level, isn't it? I think he got down to like crazy levels of shredded oh. belief. Yeah, like you say, not the healthiest. I'm gonna, just going to say to the guys in the chat, we're going to not keep Justin too much longer, guys. He's been, he's got things to do. He's been on here for a long, long time now. So about five minutes. Uh, any other questions anybody wants to ask, get them in now, guys. I'm going to let this guy get on with his day. Uh, Justin, mate, thanks for joining us as well. Really, uh, hey, it's been a while, mate, and it's great. Great to, to get you back on the show. Uh, I, I always enjoy the catch-ups, mate. I really do. Yeah, I love catching up, brother. I, I needed a, a good talk about arm wrestling because I don't I don't get to talk about it much other than uh, when I go to practice, which is, as of late, has been – hadn't been in uh, about four weeks now. Mm -hmm. I, I usually take off about a month off the table um, and just train. So – and uh, – you know, nobody in my house really talks about arm wrestling. So, hey, sir, you got your little boy there, but he's a bit young yet. And all the other all yeah. the people in your household are all lasses, aren't they? So, yeah. yeah. No, uh, really. I mean, we 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 get uh, my my oldest girl. She was in a baking competition this this week, and she knocked that out of the park. Probably the best awesome. cookie I ever ate. I didn't want to tell her that. You know, I didn't want to get too big headed, but it's probably the best one I ever ate. Tremendous, um, mate. Absolute yeah. quality. That's and, awesome. Uh, my boy is getting, he's getting big, man. I'm going to tell you, it's completely different with a little boy, though. They're completely different. Like, and how old is he now? Want, what is he, like one, one and a half, two? Yeah, he'll be two in November. So he's, yeah, about about a year and a half. You lose and, track um, of time with COVID, don't you? It's been weird. Yeah. And he's massive, man. His little hands are so big. Um, and he's, he's strong as hell. Like I thought it was like me being biased and I've had a couple of buddies come over and, you know, play with him and they're like, man, this kid's strong as shit, dude. But I, what I tell them, I said, uh, ever since he was born, you know how they, they're like this when they're born. Mm -hmm. I said, I used to take my finger and I'd open his hand and let him come back. I said, I've been doing yeah. that to him <laughs> forever. <Yeah. laughs> Crib training, absolute quality, man. Yeah. Tremendous. I bring a tool in the house, and that, that dude, he'll fall asleep with my hammer if I bring it in the house with my tape. He, you're not getting it back. He just walks around with it. Matter of fact, yeah, get, putting the old bags of rice on his wrists. So when he's moving his arms, yeah. a little bit of weight. What on he, rushing, that's rushing what he does to my tape. Hey, for anybody in the chat, you can see he's got the tape ready. 50 inches. 50. It's coming, motherfucker. Oh, Won't you injure yourself, though? That will be bad. Nah, and the nah. arm wrestling world would never forgive me if you get busted out <laughs> this match. With Paul, Paul Toll will be on the phone tomorrow. I'll be like, you mother... Yeah, we don't Appreciate that you making that time. easier for me. Mate, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. I've got. To, if you think I'm not going to throw you under the bus late in the day there when you've been sat on your ass for an hour and a half and tired out and sick as a pig in the gym car park. It's not how we roll, mate. I'll get a laugh out of it either way. But so, joking right. aside, let's have a plug on this YouTube channel. Come on. Where can the guys? Uh, it's, I'm going to put it in the description. It's, well. it's um, hold on, my truck cut off again. It's um, Outlaw Arm Wrestling, and I got the our names at the end, so it kind of pops up Justin and Josh Bishop, but it's Outlaw Arm Wrestling. Mm -hmm. um, we got a couple videos on there um, about setups, a couple of uh, one about defensive hook pulling. Yep. Um, a couple about I think we made one about the Craig match. Craig and um, Gary, uh, Gary, and uh, just because. But uh, I think we got a uh, one on there about rehab training uh, in the gym, stuff mm -hmm. we like to do for rehabs. Um, a lot of circuit training in rehabs. Uh, I like to do that, and I'm gonna tell you on buy and try day, I do a lot of drop sets. Okay, and, uh, yeah, yeah. I do uh, the tricep machine. I'll put it on 15. So I think 150 and I'll do 10 all the way to 50. So essentially you're doing uh, 
excuse me, you're doing 100 reps per set. And let me tell you, I don't do cardio, but that's a cardio workout right there. Yeah, you're not kidding. Yeah, you're blowing yeah. hard after that one, mate. Yeah, you do three or four sets of those. Your lats are blowed up. Your your tries. You're walking around with that invisible lat syndrome in the gym. Yeah, carrying carpets yeah. for the rest of the day. Right. <laughs> I never heard that. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm off carrying carpets. Absolutely. Yeah. Mate, it's been, a, it's been an absolute honor and a pleasure having you on the show. But before you go, mm-hmm. last topic to discuss. So we're trying to pull together a match with Sasho Andreev and Rob Vigent Jr. And I wanted to that. know what your thoughts were on that. How do you see that match going down? Is Oof. it going to be for the United States of America or is it going to be for the man from Bulgaria? I mean, I got to pull from my country, man, you know. Um, however, <laughs> the only thing I, I just – that just gets me with this particular match is Rob is not a fast starter, and you're going to need to be a fast starter. I mean, you just you just can't be a slow starter with these guys, with guys like him. I mean, if you watch, like, for instance, his match with Barbosa, hmm. I watched that many times before I pulled him. If he had started in the first match, you know, to me, he could have, you know, easily won that match. Mm -hmm. Not to say Barbosa, you know, Barbosa wouldn't have swapped something up or whatever, but, you know, it's kind of like the difference in John Brzezink and Ron Bath hitting and them doing their normal thing. Yeah. You never see it, but when you see it, everybody knows it. Mm -hmm. It's like, what happened, you know? But, I don't I don't know that uh, Rob can keep him out of a hook and I don't know that he can bang with him in a hook. You know, I think he can. Can he bang with him three times in a hook and win? That's the question. I do think he uh, picked, I won't say a, a, sm- a smaller guy, but he has a smaller arm. You know, he's not as tall, things of that nature. His hands, I don't. I don't, I, I don't recall seeing his hand, but I, I can't imagine it being that big, being a shorter guy like he is. Because I remember, you know, he'd been, he'd been much shorter than me. I'm not sure how tall he is. Yeah, he's short, mate. Yeah, like 5'7", five, 5'8", five, maybe. Yeah, I would think so. I would think he's around – yeah, if you were guessing at it, I would have thought 5'6", five, 5'7". Five, he's not – Yeah. He's like a square box. Like yeah. Mr. And, Strong, you know. And when you get in a hook with guys like that, it's just different. It's, it's, it's different, it, you know. I don't know, like with longer arm guys, I feel more comfortable in a hook, mm-hmm. you know, with, with the exception of uh, Tom. Tom yeah. made me feel real uncomfortable, but I think that's a completely different thing. But with those shorter arm guys, man, it's it's tough. I hate it. I hate pulling the the guys. You know that it's probably gonna go here, and they got a much shorter arm than you. Like mm-hmm. when I pulled Eli. You know, I knew he was a smaller guy. He was probably stronger than me in a hook. I was like, he can't hook me. You know, we get up there and he just no loads and beats me to the punch every time. Yeah. And we're in a hook, you know. <laughs> and, yeah. so, it's a lot like Sasho that's not going to be looking for wrist flexion. It's all that yeah. supinated, so just straight away. Yeah. You know, oh. powerful in there and jerks hard. It's a for me, it's an it, I love it. I think it's an amazing match. I think oh, it's gonna definitely be a good match. That way. But I think the, the difference, like I said, is with a guy who likes to go here, you have to push him here. Yeah, you got to get him outside that shoulder line quick, you know, or yes. or have enough grunt to to hang, hang in there. there. And who knows? Because Rob is a very strong. How how strong is is, is RVJ in your opinion? Oh, I didn't really get to feel his inside, so I don't I don't want to speak on that too much. Um, his hand. I'll say this when. I could feel his power in the first part, the first match, right? But I'm obviously in my power across the table. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he couldn't pull me straight back, you know. So if I got to go and got here, I was stronger. However, you know, he changed it up a bit in the second setup, and he, because I was no loading, you know, I was giving him nothing, which is hard to do in WAL. Mm-hmm. It's real hard to do. So he starts giving me some of this pressure in the strap. So I'm having to apply this or I'm just going to start with my hand under, you know, mm-hmm. so 
So now my, my hit's not as good. So anyway, I think his – what I felt of the couple matches we had was his rotation was really good yeah. after the match started. And I'm not going to say it's not that good on the start. He's just slow, you know. So – but um, if he can, you know – I think if he keep his best option, in my opinion, is going to be to do a low hand setup and push him slightly off center on go yeah. and hope that it's flat here, you know, because he can go all day. Rob can arm wrestle all day. Mm-hmm. Wish I had that. But, you know, and usually it's the guys who are super lean, super swelled up that can't go all day and mm-hmm. Rob's both. So I don't, you know, I don't know who the fuck's got a 20 inch bicep, that can, you know, can bang in a hook all day like that. But, yeah, where did he get them arms? Like, where did he get them? the big arm shop? I mean, I've the- never met his his dad, but you know, he's, he's got to be freakishly. You know, yeah, I mean, I'm taller than I'm taller than my dad, but he's freakishly, you know, genetically lean and mm-hmm. things of that. I mean, the guy never works out. You, you swear he worked out. Yeah, tawny shredded as fuck, isn't he? He's he's in, he's in great nick. You know, I, I rem- he reminds me a lot of Craig, like the way they're built and the way they just naturally. And I also heard a story about Craig one time slapping a guy to sleep, and that reminded me of my dad. So <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, they got that same yeah. kind of old man. <laughs> the same okay. dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. brothers from the and all that. I've, I've both <laughs> felt that and seen that, yeah, so, so. but I'll bet you have, mate. I'll bet you and Josh are very familiar. With, with that feeling. I really do. Listen, mate, I'm going to let you jump off here. Uh, before we go, guys, I want to just say thank you to everybody in the chat for taking the time, tuning in, checking us out. Really appreciate it. Please make your way over to Justin's channel, Outlaw Arm Wrestling YouTube. Uh, follow this guy on TikTok as well. Absolute savage on there. Got a big following on TikTok. Going to be doing different stuff. And watch out for that clothing line. I hit a quarter meal. Quarter of a million. That's ridiculous, mate. I, I had to start a new account though because they, they keep taking taking my shit down. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute quality. Check him out, ladies and gents. And if this is your first time at Supernatural Strength Channel, please like, share, subscribe. Uh, if you're in a kind mood, give us a sub as well. And uh, until we see you next time here, we're back with a fix live on Sunday, and we may have something, maybe just me. Uh, one night this week. We'll see what happens. But, ladies and gents, thank you very much for tuning in, checking us out. Justin, all the best, brother, and we'll see you again soon. I appreciate it, brother. Thank you, all of you. We're good.